females are all evil penners. But this is another example. There's like a girl can be absolutely f fucked in the head, nuts as shit, total slut. You know, pictures leaked online. None of it fucking matters. None of the shit you do matters. All that matters is be attractive and don't be unattractive. Oh my lord. Rules one and two. <laughs>
you can smash your fist in the keyboard like you can still win the game by the end. That's also true. Yeah, it's not just with men that, you know, women can say anything. The, the thing with, like, conversations between women, I, I remember one time there was this girl in um, a gaming server I was in. I mean, a gaming, like, uh, it was just a group with a bunch of, it was like a girl gamer server. And there was one girl in there who just started fights, just, like, stupid, endless bitching fights every time she came in. And she had like a ridiculous name, like Angel Baby or something. She was just she was she was she seemed like one of those like one of those like Latina girls that just like always runs her mouth like all day. She was like one of those. Okay. And the thing is, like all the girls like hated her in this group, but and they would shit talk her behind your back. But I mean, first off, like every girl shit talks each other each other behind their backs. The only exception to this is if it's like the queen bee of the group, if it's like the highest value girl in the group, then generally everyone's just gonna suck up to her to, to avoid any bad blood with you know the highest value girl. But anyone else, like it was like fair game. Like all the girls hated each other. They just wanted to one up each other. That's how women are. The entire, really, just socialization for women is it's, it's like a game because it's so easy for them. That all they're trying, all they're focused on is being better than the girls, that, being better than their peers. That's all it is. Everybody is trying, is focused on being better than their peers. They just focus on different ways. Women are socialized to, like, be attractive to men, and men are socialized to be leaders. So there's a disconnect. So, like, that's why it seems easy for women, because they're socialized to be, like, attractive to men like that's their value in our society whereas men are valued for different things men are valued for their productivity they're valued for how we, uh, how well they contribute to their system and like things like that and it, 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 it all ends up fucking over like the bottom percentages of both of both groups but like men are also forced to compete against each other almost all the time but i do agree with, with a lot of what grotesca is saying here with like the way that people interact behind each other's backs. There is like a lot of backstabbing or like drama I've noticed, but there was always drama before as well. Or it was like, it wouldn't be drama. It would just be like disrespect to their faces played off as jokes. And socialization is it's so easy for me. It's like, no, anyway, like this angel baby, whatever. This girl's a tall bitch, like just constantly started like stupid arguments. She always <laughs> Every girl, like, no matter what they did, they always be, like, part of the group. That's just how women are. Like, women are just basically, like, friend collectors. Like, that's why you look, you look on, like, Instagram and shit, and all these girls have, like, 20,000 friends. It's because, like, nothing they say matters. It's, like, just, they just want someone to say, is my friend, this person, like, adds to my social value, and that's all that matters. I don't think it's necessarily all for, like, adding to social value. I think a lot of it is just, like, loneliness and trying to, like, seek connection with other people. And it's easier for women to do that with each other than it is for men to do that with each other that I found from my own experiences. Yeah. So like, it looks like women have a lot of friends because they can be vulnerable with each other and like make connections. Whereas men struggle to make connections because men are socialized to not really feel vulnerable. So it, it makes sense why you would look at what happens and read it as like, purely like oh this person adds to my social value when in reality like that person does add value but it comes out of like emotional value and like maybe some social value but also like the connection is built so you start to like the person more or the connection is building like conversations either like this is one thing is like he asked me is like, oh were there any insane experiences with women no I mean, dude, like 95% of the time with female conversations are just the most boring banal shit. <laughs> it's gonna be mostly like women talking about clothes. No, first off, celebrities. Oh my God, dude. Every woman, every woman is obsessed with fucking celebrities. And I hate it. It's just like me, like I'm so anti-celebrity, anti-Jew shit. It's just like, when they talk about that, I just go, Ugh. or you know, they talk, women like, they always have to talk about their pets or clothes or how they wanna travel. It's always the same shit. And, and, but women don't have like conversations. They just like, they just like randomly talk about shit they like. <laughs> like just cute shit they like. That's all they do. There, there's no debate. There's no like, trying to figure out what's right because women don't care <laughs> like socialization with women is just really really dull but why i enjoyed it so much is because like socialization is just it, it's an automatic thing for women like i, I think there's still a lot of guys mm -hmm. women are socialized to conversate differently women are taught to have interests and like they're not necessarily supposed to hold beliefs people get mad at opinionated women but men are socialized to have opinions and like have certain beliefs and not that like they're socialized to have specific beliefs necessarily there's not like one set thing that all men learn but like most men are taught to like have a stance on something have a value or like an idea of how something should work debate argue what's right what's wrong 
And I think that that's because men are groomed to be like leaders and like protectors rather than people. They are meant just to like, they're socialized to just take care of other people. They're socialized to like protect other people at, in spite of themselves. And that's frustrating for me. And that's why I'm making videos like this. To the realize that every woman, I don't care if it's like a nerdy, fat, 500 pound woman who's disgusting and smells and whatever, every woman, no exceptions, has a robust social life. She is talking, every woman, every one of them is talking to people all day. No exceptions to that rule, dude. In my last video, I, 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 made, I made like 10 examples of this and I was like doxing girls. I was like, dude, there was some dude, even like one, I don't want to dox her, but it was like, she was like a 300 pound single mother, like admitted to just like dating new guys every week. And, and that's another thing, dude. Oh my God. The amount of women that just like, of like low value, below average women that like date dudes every week, which is basically admitting like, that's how they admit they fuck random dudes. Oh my God. Like that's another thing that can get you really, really depressed. But I mean, just literal fucking ham beast women, dude, who just like, they have robust social lives. You, it's, it's automatic for women, dude, and that's, I think that's like the main reason why I want, I always want to role play as a woman, and I wish I was one of them. That's not why you wish you were one of them. You have AGP. But, I'm just kidding. That wasn't like a diagnosis, but it is a suspicion. I would love to interview you and talk with you more, flesh out the thoughts, but you, I don't know. You probably wouldn't want to hear it, and it sounds like your community wouldn't like it. Anyways, this dude has AGP. This dude is like me. That's all I got. Um... Or was like me. I don't think I have AGP anymore. I think I'm curing my AGP. In the process of curing my AGP. This video is curing it. This YouTube video. But. I don't think I agree with your take on women's socialization. Because you're looking at it only from an outside view. You're not looking at it from an inside view. Or like the... Mm, I also don't agree with your take on the only things that women talk about. I will agree that a vast majority of the things that I find discussed in female circles are more service level, like boys, celebrities, shows, like casual things. I believe it's built or it's meant more to build emotional reciprocity with other people, like that connection building I was talking about earlier. Um, and also, as somebody who participates in, like, female social circles now, I do think that it's more... They talk about a lot more than you would realize, but they don't debate it in the same way that male groups do. Male groups like to, like, figure out who's right, debate things... Women will, like, share their emotions about something. Something that's frustrating them. Or, like, something that is... I don't know. Just, like, their emotions around something. Rather than the thing being wrong, they just have feelings about the thing. Um, so I think it's just, like, a difference in the way that, like, men are socialized to communicate and discuss things and exist versus the way that women are socialized to exist and so like communicate and things like that because it's just so easy and in my situation it's just like nobody gives a fuck about me at all you know i, I rambled about this for like half an hour in the last video i should probably avoid doing that so you just didn't have the experience of being a group woman with you do they talk about late counts no no women never talk about sex women are not sexual i mean for, it reminds me of an andy nowicki video i think this was like a at least a year or so ago, and he, he talked about uh, like attractiveness between men and women and how different he, he said it is for, for women. And it's very, very true. Women are not sexual. Women do not talk about sex. In fact, there's one example of a woman who was it's dating like a dude who was uh, in like, it was like this uh, more like a libertarian server. And this girl ended up dating one of the dudes from there. And he was like a guy who was pretty well respected. He, he did like some writing and some blog shit. And, he, and she boasted like, oh, he's so nice to me. And he never asks for anything from me. Which is basically like, she's not putting out for him. Like, that, that, that's kind of the code word for that. And, she, and this woman, she, she was so happy about it. And, like, all the girls that were, like, congratulating her for doing it. It's like, like, wow, how did you manage to do that? I think sex for women is really just a bargaining chip. And it's, like, it, it's the main asset they have that they can give to a man. And if you give it away, like, you're... Listen to yourself. I, I think that's just how women do sex. They, they don't talk they, they don't talk about sex or brag about it or their exploits. Now, I should note, though, most of these... Uh, most of the time I spent with these women online, most of this was 10-plus years ago. It, it may be very different now. Like, this may... Women do talk about sex a lot. They talk about it very differently than men talk about sex. 
but women do talk about sex and sexual things and sexual experiences and like sex is very casual when you are in women groups rather than being like the force of like greatness that it is for most men and most male groups it's just like another one of the casual things it's like a celebrity or a boy or a show that's on or your sex life like it's all just little things that get sprinkled in there to build that emotional connection to build that connection with a, with other people um whereas i feel like with male groups it's more about like asserting yourself or like making yourself look like a badass or like boasting rather than like sharing if that makes sense you're not like telling about your sensual sexual experience you're talking about how you bang the fuck out of that chick like it's just different i don't know the way that the it's the language i already talked about this Need Uber advice. I, I would readily admit that. I mean, especially today, you look on social media and all these girls are just straight up fucking whores and brag about all the dudes that are fucking. It, it may be different now, but I'm, I, I, but I never had any saw any discussions with women talking about sex. Like they don't. And it's like you say here in, in your comment here, the girls in her social circle didn't. And even I don't want you to think this is just young people. Old women talk about sex all the time. Old women are fucking gaudy as fuck. Oh my god. They're intense. They're much. They make me. They, I get uncomfortable, honestly. But yeah, like I'm. I got into female social gr groups and social circles um, due to being like a trans person and transitioning to a feminine role in society. And like, I don't know how to respond a lot of the time when like people in feminine groups start talking about sex in the way that they talk about sex. Like I just I. It, it feels very odd to me as somebody who has not communicated in that way about it before. Yeah, like they don't brag about their prowess. They just talk about their experiences. They talk about their emotions around the experiences. It's crazy. I'm aware of any of the stuff that your sister was doing. Yeah, they don't talk about it. Like it, it's not a positive. But how I think women view things sexually, I. Like, I mentioned the ending the wiki video. Like, oh, I do want to mention that I think a lot of women do use sex as a bargaining chip. And especially within, like, cis-hetero dynamics, which is just, like, straight couples. I have seen the woman utilize sex as a weapon. Or, like, you're not getting laid until this happens. Or you're not getting fucked if this doesn't happen. Or just other things that are, like holding it as a tool or a weapon. Um, and I don't think all women do that, especially as you get away from like straight couples. Uh, like lesbian dynamics are very different and like transbian dynamics are very different. And I feel like even like relationships with like a, between a cis guy and a trans woman would probably even be different. Like, I feel like sex being used as a weapon is one of those things that a lot of moms or grandmoms or, like, female role models will teach young girls as a way to, like, keep the man in check. Um, and it makes it, like, enemies to each other. The, women and men, like, position themselves against each other well, kind of. Men like to position themselves as, like, protector, dominator, like, leader. So they want to be on top. And then, like, women are expected to be submissive. But then, like, they have to learn how to have their power within this dynamic. And they do that by, like, withholding things. Like, you're not going to get... F you're not going to get fucked. They're saying that to this one. You're not going to get fucked if you don't do this, this, and this. And because he holds most of the power, he's the leader, she's probably saying it, like... I'm not attracted to you if you're not demonstrating dominant qualities. I don't, it really turns me off when you don't do things like this. We, I don't feel horny around you when this isn't happening. Which honestly, it might even be the, the truth to her. Like she's just expressing her emotions around it. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's what I got. So I, I do think it is used as a weapon and it's wrong to use it as a weapon. But at the same time, I think it is part of the issue of a lack of communication within straight couples most of the time. Um, 
it's really a communication thing. Like, you gotta be able to talk it out and unlearn a lot of the bullshit that our parents taught us when we were kids. Are, are not attracted to, like, the visual of the man. Like, how men think, you know, women are hot, you know, and, and men have their, you know, uh, their types and such. Women don't have, women, I don't think women, uh, that applies to them at all. Women are attracted to winners. And I think the best example of this that I can think of through my experience is talking with women. Like, I was in a wrestling group. And, um, like, the women there, like, as a guy, you would think, oh, well, these women are watching, like, you know, these naked guys wearing Speedos and are super muscular and on roids and shit. Uh, that's not how it's like for women at all. Like, the, the wrestlers that the women liked were generally the winners. Like, the guys that had high value. I think the best example of this, if, if, if you watched uh, WWF in, like, the 2000s, the, the wrestler that, like, every woman liked to some degree was Triple H. He was, like, the perfect guy because, okay, one, he, he, he's a, I mean, he's a good-looking guy. I wouldn't say he's Chad, but he was good-looking. You know, he was, like, super ripped and on roids and stuff. But the main thing with Triple H was, one, he was fucking the boss's daughter, and he eventually married her. I mean, that is a big status thing itself. But I think the main reason why is he was booked super strong compared to every other wrestler. He was always the winner. He never looked weak. He was the cool heel. He always won, like, every match that mattered, and he never looked weak. He talked down to, like, everyone. He was, he was obviously the guy who was, who was booked the highest. Like, he was the guy that received... I agree with some of this. I do think that having high value is an attractive thing to most women. But looks are not the only value in a man. Because if we look at this dynamic that we built, that most of us were taught as kids, with like men being dominant and like the leader and the provider, and the women like being the follower and like submissive and, and like working with him. He has to be a winner. She can't just find some attractive dude to, like, be the boss. She can't find some attractive dude to, like, take care of her. She needs somebody who can provide. She needs somebody who's, like, good. And looks help with this. Don't get me wrong. Looks can help boost the value. But you need to be able to be a provider as well if you want to, like, be extremely attractive to a lot of people. This isn't everybody, but to a lot of people, you do need to have more value than just your appearance. Special treatment. And every woman I talked to back in that era in the 2000s, were, they, they, they always loved Triple H. And it, was, and it was generally like the wrestlers they liked were always the ones that, it wasn't that they were attractive, it was because they thought, oh, he's really good and he wins all the time. Oh, he seems so powerful. That's what it was always about. <clears throat> and, and it's like the same way when, in my tennis forums. I mean, like, the, the tennis girls are, are kind of different. Because one, you have a lot of lesbians, and they're always just mean and bitchy. You see that now with social media. Like, back even in the 2000s, like, they were like that. Just very aggressive. A lot of lesbians are mean to men because men are sexual to lesbians, and then the lesbians get mad that they're being sexualized, and then the men get offended that the lesbians are mad. I think that's how that dynamic plays out. But I'm going to let you finish your point. I'm sorry for interrupting you. And it's like, I ain't gay. Mean, bitchy. You see that now with social media, like back even in the 2000s, like they were like that. Just very aggressive and it's like, I'm gay and blah, 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 give me all the rights and stuff. And plus there were a lot of blacks in, in these tennis forms too. This is back in the early 2000s. I'm gay and give me all my rights and stuff. Fair enough, honestly, that's kind of a good point. And, 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 you know, basically it's like my time span the career of like Venus and Serena Williams. So you had a lot of those black fans and they just hated every player that wasn't black. And and then they just always mind about, oh, I'm black and you don't know what happens for me. And they're just tired of talking to you. But, um, they also, you know, it was always, they just liked the guys who won a lot. Like, say, you know, Roger Federer. He's not, like, the most attractive dude, but, like, all the girls love him. You know? <laughs> it's all, it, was just, it was always the guys who were the highest value. That's that's who the girls liked. Now, I, I think also in that... Now, now I'm not saying looks don't matter for women. They obviously do. I think, I, I think effectively, and I made videos on this, like, it looks mean more for men. Because, you, 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 you know, I just thought about it. Anytime, when, when is the only time I ever heard the term conventionally attractive? It's only women who ever say that term. Because for women, it, all that matters is, is like you need that level of looks to where it's believable that a man is high status. And I think that's that's where sexuality for women it comes down to. Like you need that level of looks where it's believable that you're a high status man. And it's just something you either have it or you don't. And the thing is like conventionally attractive means women, you know, they just all view high status men is basically the same thing. And I made a video on this. It, it can vary based basically on what the Jew media says is popular. I made a video on this. So yeah, I mean, and that pretty much coincides with my experiences, you know, you know with a lot of group conversations with women. They just want the conventionally attractive guy who apparently has a lot of status. That's what turns them on. Now, I mean, as for women admitting to being sluts, like, uh, you know, like, like the, 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 they do, but they do it in, like, their code way. Like, there was one girl I was good friends with. Uh, she was, they she was kind of like a, a white trash girl who I first met from this wrestling community. She was a few years older than me. She was a single mother. She worked, uh, she was like a nurse, like a, like a registered nurse, like a legit, pretty good paid one. She was a relatively successful woman. And she was really nice, like a really sweet woman. But she was dating new dudes every week. And like that's just how they are. Like that—that's the most you're gonna get out of them to say that, you know. 
women don't admit to their sleeping around. I mean, that's what I've seen. I'm sure it happens. And then, like, probably the worst example of, of a woman who, who like, slept around. There was, a, there was a girl that I actually first knew when I was taught. Back Again, they do speak about it behind closed doors. I hear a lot of the adventures that my lady friends go on. Um... But again, like, it's a casual thing. They're just mentioning it and their emotions around it. And, like, the it's very casual. It doesn't need to be right or wrong. And it seems like it's being demonized by grotesque subhuman here, where it's like women don't admit that they're, that they're sleeping around. But, like, why do they need to admit it, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people are envious of people that fuck. Both boys that get it, or, or both boys that don't get sex and girls that don't get sex. Everybody's envious of people who fuck. So, like, why does it matter if somebody admits that they're sleeping around if you're just going to be jealous of them? And in personal experiences, if you ask questions that you're going to get hurt by the answer to, why are you asking the question? Like, a lot of guys don't want to hear about how women are sleeping around. And women know that, so they don't talk about it to a lot of guys. Because guys are going to look at it negatively and demonize it. Even though guys are wishing that they were fucking as many people as some girl was. So, like... GG. I don't know. GG's. Before I even did these female experiments, there was a girl named Kitty. Kitty Cat. Her real name was, like, slept around. There was, a, there was a girl that I, I actually first knew when I was taught back in, before I even did these female experiments. There was a girl named Kitty, Kitty Cat. Before I even did these female experiments. Ah! I want to interview you so bad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Her real name was Catherine. If you called her Catherine, she would like flip out of you. Now, Kitty was like, she was a, I don't know, she was like kind of an ugly, frumpy girl. But you know, she was pale with like dark hair, so I was into her. But she was kind of just chubby and nothing special, probably like three, four out of ten. And like on this, like this girl was just constantly depressed. She a looks super match. Hard to talk to. Like most of the time, you would just get like one word answers out of her, and she was just beat down. Like she, she felt her family hate her, and everyone hated her. She was just one of those types of girls. I mean, she was like pleasant enough. Like she would like stay your friend. The heart talking to her was like a nightmare. So anyway, this girl, not that attractive. I mean, I, I actually tried to get with her back when I was taught. Like she would like stay your friend. The heart talking to her was like a nightmare. So anyway, this girl. She was pleasant enough. She would stay your friend, but talking to her was it like a nightmare. She just talked to you. You don't like her. Why are you talking to her? That's what I don't understand. I don't understand why you will be like, she was pleasant enough, but talking to her was awful. I hate. Every, I hated every second of the conversation. I hated every second of every interaction with this lady. But I will, I'm so jealous and I want to fuck. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that attractive. I mean, I, I actually tried to get with her back when I was taught, but she was into like one of these like stoner dudes in our group, and she never, like, that was kind of the guy she was always going for. Well, anyway, a few years later, because I knew her from like this wrestling group. I, then, I, then I like joined this group, you know, as Lily. Like, now I was role playing as a girl, and because I knew her from like this wrestling group. I then I, then I like joined this group, you know, as Lily. Like, now I was role playing as a girl, and it ended up that Kitty, like she went to college, and then she ha she got like tons and tons of boyfriends, and like she posted like pictures of her with like the guy she dated, and she's like this like five two, just frumpy, like super pale, just like unkempt looking girl. Nothing special at all. And she's dating these dudes who are like six six basketball players, like and all, all white dudes. And, and there were a couple that were just like super attractive too. Like they were at least like high normies and she's just like this three out of ten just whatever girl. Even a girl like that, it's just like I remember how angry I got when I saw that. Because she was like one of those girls, like I genuinely felt like I had a chance. Like she was she was basically my looks match. And she's dating dudes, no problem. And this girl who has like literally no social skills. Like, I said like that. she she very well may have been autistic. She had like some mental thing wrong with her. And she's dating just tons of fucking dudes way out of my league. I remember Hey also I just want to say this. A lot of these incels, you got autism. A lot of us trannies, we got autism. So, like, we are one and the same here, my friend. Don't be punching at yourself. Um, not that you're talking about training, but I was just thinking about it. Because, like, a lot of the incel community wants to demonize autism when we're literally all sitting here with it. So, GG. I don't know. Um, but anyways, point being, it's okay to be autistic. GG how angry I got when I saw that. I just felt like, what the fuck was I ever supposed to do? You know? Transition. Okay, Become a I girl. That one. Do it some grotesque. But I mean, like, as, as for stories... Uh, just kidding. There really, there really are I mean, no kind of. like, super interesting stories. You should. To women. Uh, like, women don't really have arguments or 
really like fights or anything. Like there's some that are just bitchy, but like women just they don't they don't really engage in that. It's all just kind of banal talk, and girls just like trying to like sneakily one up each other. That all it's all really is, you know. But like as as I said, socialization for women is just an automatic thing. It's no, it's not. The way they interact is so crazy. There's a lot of code. There's a lot of like hidden language. I think uh shit's crazy there but we already talked about this the socialization for how people look at arguments is different men are socialized to look at the right answer and what's correct and like argue basically women are taught to know things but don't argue you can have your emotions but don't really talk about them most of the time just like get what done what's done that needs to be done um and yeah, I think that's why many women don't argue. And they also are able to like hold the emotional understanding of like a lot of things or like they don't want to, I don't know, argue with their friends because a lot of them agree on a lot of the same like foundational thing. It's, it's by default. You always do it. And there's a guy like me and I get none of it. So. And that's another thing on that too, is like, I think maybe one of the worst things that I learned from, you know, talking to all these women online is that like, I know they all have robust social circles. So it's like, that's why I'm so reticent to talk to any woman that comes within you know, like these manosphere groups. Because their intentions have to be bad. I'm sorry. Every woman has a, has a robust social circle. I even talk to women who admit this. Okay, so it's like, if you have all these friends and all these people to talk to, why are you talking to me? It makes no sense. I think a lot of you guys realize that too. Like, why are you talking to me? Like, what is your goal in doing this? I mean, it's not to raise your, your social status. I mean, I, I just think women, like, there's some women who just just must want attention 24 seven and they just see like lowly guys like us as you know, the option that like, we're just gonna be like the lost puppy they find. I mean, that's the- That's not what I'm here for. I am in these areas to ping pill all of you. Just kidding, kind of. I wanna ping pill the pink pillable ones and help the rest of them not hate trans people so much. Cause I really don't like all the tranny hate that we're getting out there. We want to reduce that a little bit, but I'm not here to just get your attention 24 seven. But if you want to give it to me, I would gladly take it. But that's not why I'm here. I'm not just here for the attention. That's the best analogy I can come up with. Like that's why, that's why I think these girls come into these communities and do that. And I mean like that, that, and that's just not a healthy friendship. It can't be. Men, like the bottom line is like men and women need to be attracted to each other for it to work. If not, it's, it, it's just not gonna work. And it's because, like, women, women don't debate. Women don't want to learn things. They don't want to do any of that. Women just want social status. And women don't like to debate with a lot of men because a lot of men feel like their opinion is the only right one. Or, well, that's the way it comes across in, like, arguments. Because a lot of women, they communicate differently. They don't realize that you're trying to, like, dig deeper and, like, have a intense discussion to, like, figure something out. They just look at it as, like, arguing or, like angry, I think. And as a result, I can see why you feel like that, but I don't think they, I don't think that's accurate. Women love to learn, but often they already are aware of a lot of the things that you're saying or like the meta around your position and they don't agree with you and they know you're gonna get angry and not leave it alone. Or not get angry, but, like, get heated and, like, not leave it alone if they bring it up. Or if they mention anything. Or, like, if you disagree, maybe you get angry and you, like, freak out on them over something. Like, I don't know. Women are often thinking about their own safety and, like, staying protected for themselves. Because men can be really scary when you're not, when you don't have the same physical capabilities as them. And, I don't know. It's sad, you know. I'm rambling again. Yeah, I mean, that's Damn. how I feel. About these girls that come in these communities, and you notice they're all just fucked up, like every one of them. You know, like Rowan, Vegan Dolls, Talia. Oh God! If you haven't seen the recent news about Talia, she she recently she had a child a month ago. Oh my Lord! Her name is Lily. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Imagine. Oh my God! Talia's kid is going to be so absolutely mentally fucked in the head. They really, like, wait, wait, 16, 18 years for Lily Croft to be online. Oh my God! She's gonna be like the biggest e girl in the history of the internet. <laughs> God, she has a fucking kid. Oh, Lord. Well, there's another example for you, by the way. 
if you think that like you you you, you can't find you know sex and love oh, by the way tali also isn't married by the way she had a kid out of wedlock she, she's had the kid and she's still not married yeah he, are you really shocked that all the christian shit was a larp and all the e-marriage and all that bullshit <laughs> But this is another example. Like a girl can be absolutely fucked in the head, nuts as shit, total slut. You know, pictures leaked online. None of it fucking matters. None of the shit you do matters. All that matters is be attractive and don't be unattractive. Oh my lord. Rules one and two. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Talia. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> You have this young woman who, like, only a year ago was, like, posting all day on fucking YouTube insult videos, and now she has a kid. <laughs> hey, sorry, I'm rambling again. That would be crazy. My world. Anyway, the video just finish uh, Kevin's comment here. So, uh, yeah, I know he says, uh, you know, he just talks about how his sister, you know, is a covert whore. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks to these videos, I know you're fed up. Yeah, I am fed up. You can say that. You can say that for sure. Um, I, I want to die? No, I don't want to die. There's only one reason I don't want to die. It's because I'm on meat bucks. Like, I can just do whatever all day. If I'd work again, I'd be dead. If I'd have any kind of life where I'd socialize constantly, I'd be dead. Like, I would jump off a bridge, no question asked. So, I feel that. The only reason I don't is because uh, of, uh, I'm on Neat Bucks. I'm very lucky. And I know a lot of you guys watching that. Like, I know a lot of you guys wish you were, too. I wish a lot of you could get on that. You know, I, 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 I listen to Fuck Up Cell, and I just, like, hear how much he's struggling, like, working his, uh, what, cashier job, where he's working in a store all, like, six days a week, and... <laughs> man, that, that dude is working six days a week, and he lives with his family, and he has, like, a sister that has kids and shit. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I, I understand my fuck-up cell is so angry. <laughs> I would be too. Holy shit. I'm lucky enough I never even had to live in a situation like that. At least my work. Like, I had, like, kind of had my own house that my grandma gave me. He's got to live with his fucking parents after weights leaving six days a week. Holy shit. If I was in that situation, yeah, then I would unquestionably want to die. I would be thinking about that, like, every second of every day. Ah, uh, poor fuck-up cell. Sucks for you, man. At least he looks better than me, though. Love helps you provide value for people like me. Uh, it, it doesn't really. <laughs> the only thing I want is, is a girlfriend. So, I want a girlfriend. I want a woman that genuinely likes me, but, like, it's never going to happen, so... I'm just kind of aimless. I just, I just live life, enjoy my copes as best as I can, look back. It's just unavoidable for me. Like a lot of times, probably like every day, I look back to my time role playing as a girl online and wish I could do it again. I want to go back to that so much, dude. Just like that feeling of being human. I don't feel human. As Todd, I don't feel human. I have it for probably at least 30 years. I'm never going to feel human in this skin. And that is a very sad, lonely existence, you know? I want to be a girl where, you know, just like socialization is automatic. You feel a part of the world, you feel a part of society. It's not automatic, but I do believe that you want to be a girl, Todd. I do believe that. And I am sorry that you feel so isolated by society, and I can really relate to that. Um, and it's not fair that we live in a society that ostracizes us because of our socialization and like the way that we were trained to do things and we're stigmatized because of it. It's really, it's really shitty, for lack of a better word, that we are stuck in this. So I'm sorry that that's how you feel, and I can relate. You have like some kind of community. I don't consider what making these videos in the mass your community because men don't have each other's backs. Like, I got, you know, I got comments from guys saying that it's like, oh, Todd, your simple would throw us all under the bus for pussy. I'm like, yeah, I would. And the thing is, I believe all of you would do the same thing. That's all my life experiences. That's why male friends don't interest me. Yeah, male friends don't interest me because you all throw, throw, you're all just completely change your entire existence when a woman is around. And conversations with women are like the most boring, pointless, banal shit ever. They're competing so all the time. Men are competing I all the really time. Want to communicate with anyone. I think that's why I make these videos. I can just, I can just rant into a camera and I don't have to like listen to other people's shit because like, what's the point? I have nothing to gain from doing it. No girlfriend, no woman genuinely attracted to me. I'm not conventionally attractive, so I'm not good enough for women. And men just want pussy. So that's it. I ran it for 30 minutes again. Hey, uh, okay. If you watch all of this, uh, God help you. Okay, bye. GG. Well, thank you for watching. If oh. you're interested no. in business. No! No! Thank you for watching. Overall, I actually enjoyed the video. And it, I found it very insightful on the mindset of an incel YouTuber. And I would love to talk more with you, Grotesque Subhuman. And thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. I think that there is a lot of value and perspective in understanding a lot of different people's points of view. And I know that for a lot of you that are watching this, a lot of the people that watch my videos 
they like to stigmatize and stereotype men and incels as a specific way because of the fears and emotions that they have or that, that you have as an individual towards those groups or experiences that you've had with them in the past. And I want to encourage everybody to empathize with other people, especially if you're part of the trans community, to empathize with other people who have been fucked over by male socialization and the way that men are socialized. I refer to it as the boyhood, but like my boyhood is what fucked me up. The way I learned how to be a man and be a boy is like, it was not good. It really didn't care about me at all as a person. And it really fucked me over. So I think that that's one thing that the trans community and the incel community do have in common is that we both have fallen victim to the way that we were socialized and the way that that fits into society. And I'm sorry that we're here, but thank you for watching and I will talk to you later.